Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today I'm going to show you how to deploy a D365 cloud hosted development environment. Environments are great because then you can use Visual Studio to customize the code, read the code, debug code, um, all for Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Before I get into exactly the steps of how you deploy an environment using LCS, I wanted to go through a few of the different types of environment just so you understand the differences. There are tier two and above environments. They are the environments you're gonna see show up on the front page of your LCS project. These environments are hosted by Microsoft. You can control um, the performance and how many cores um, and all, all the rest for the environments. But really you can just access the front end of the environment. You can't um, change the code using Visual Studio. You can just deploy packages to um, change the code and, and deploy new code to those environments. There's one exception you can use just in time um, access where you can query um, the data in the database using SQL. But those are the tier two environments. The next type of environments are tier one cloud hosted environments. Um, and those are what I'm gonna show you how you can create today. Those are the environments that you find in LCS under uh, this three lines marking and then cloud hosted environments right there. Um, before I show you that, there is another type of tier one environment. You can download a um, virtual machine and use Hyper-V on your local laptop to run the machine. That's really great because it doesn't cost you anything. It does take up um, some hard drive space on your laptop, at least 100 gigabytes, and then it takes up quite a bit of memory to run, um, and so it may perform a little slower, um, but it's definitely a great way to learn. So I definitely recommend you check out this uh, article and video if you haven't done that already. Um, all right, but let's jump into how do we actually create these cloud hosted environments. And I guess before I get started, uh, one other piece there, Microsoft does have in preview a unified development experience, which is another type of environment. That environment will be hosted by Microsoft in the cloud. You'll be able to do all your coding on your local virtual machine. Um, and read code and deploy code by connecting Visual Studio to that cloud hosted environment and then syncing that metadata back and forth. But that's still in preview um, as of the recording of this video. So I wanted to show you how to create these cloud hosted environments. Okay, so the first step is you need a LCS project. And so what we're seeing right here uh, is an LCS project. If you go to lcs.dynamics.com, I recommend you look at this Microsoft um, Learn page on how to create a new LCS project. It'll walk you through the steps of creating a new project. The next thing that you need to do is you need to add an Azure subscription to that LCS project because what we're gonna do today does um, cost um, some Azure um, money um, in order to host that cloud hosted VM. So you'll have to add an Azure subscription to your project. And again, these are the steps I just recommend you follow them from the Microsoft Learn site. Now that we've created an LCS project and we've got Azure tied to it, we can actually walk through the steps of creating and deploying a new environment. The way you do that is you go to these three lines button, then go to cloud hosted environments. This is going to show you all of the cloud hosted environments you have currently deployed already. You can then click this add button right here to begin the process of creating a new environment. So 
when we do that, the first step we're going to be prompted with is asking what version of D365 would we like to deploy. And usually I would say you're going to want to deploy the latest if you're just um, playing around. If you've already got a production environment um, or a test environment, you should really match the version that you already got. That way, if you need to do a database restore from production to this development environment you can do that um, and the versions will match and you won't get synchronization errors for the moment i'll just select the highest version that's out now which is 10.0.37 and that defaults in from there you should really only see one platform version that defaults in based on which version you've selected so that's great now we can click the next button to go to the next screen um, the next question we're gonna be asked is what kind of topology do we wanna deploy? So that really refers to the image um, that's being used by this cloud hosted machine. If you're only planning on using it um, for the front end D365 website, you can select demo and that's great for demonstration purposes. If you're interested in using Visual Studio and reading code and deploying code and all the rest, I recommend you select this dev test. This is gonna be a better option for you. So we'll go ahead and select dev test. The next question we need to say is, is this a build environment um, or a development environment? Most of the time you're gonna select this development environment um, build environments are really if you're setting up a build server and you're tying it to a DevOps pipeline and you're using this machine to automatically um, uh, download all your source code, build a package for deploying to a tier two or later. So that's definitely useful. Um, but if you're just looking to use it yourself, you wanna select this develop option. All right, the next thing we need to do is pick which Azure connector you wanna use. You may only have one set up, but you could have several, so I'm just gonna pick one here. Okay, this next screen is gonna ask me what is my environment name? So I could name it something like Peter Dev. Um, you basically, you just need to make sure that you're giving this a unique name and a name that you're gonna recognize. Um, there's a few other important settings here. We need to pick the size of the machine we um, want to use. And so the this is an extremely important step. Depending on which um, size we're picking, that's going to change the hardware, the processors, um, even potentially the drives that are being used by our development machine. And that's going to have different costs associated with it. So if we actually go over to um, this tab here, you can go to azure.microsoft.com, ENUS pricing, um, details, virtual machine, windows, and then pricing. So I can paste this link in the article or you can even Google D365 pricing. It's gonna bring you to this page where you can view basically their whole long list of all the different sizes and what their costs are. My recommendation might be to use this DS12 V2. Um, it, but you can really determine what works best for you, for your budget, for the speed that you need that machine um, to work. As you can see, there is a monthly cost with these Azure development environments, but um, you also can turn these environments off to kind of reduce the cost and then turn them back on. Um, and so I believe this cost is if you're leaving it on for kind of the whole 24-7. Um, but definitely read the fine print here um, and make sure that you understand the costs associated with, with, with each environment that you're picking as well as the speeds and figure out what works for you. So I'm gonna go back here and pick that um, DS12 um, environment Let's see, DS12 V2. Next thing I need to do is click this checkbox to say that I agree to the pricing, that I fully understand that I'm gonna be charged for this environment. 
Um, and then before we click next, there's another important button, this advanced settings that have um, some really important things that we need to configure. So let's click on that now. All right, um, on this page, I'm gonna see if I can make it fit better in the window. I think that's okay. Um, let's just go down each one of these and I can explain which ones you may need to modify and which ones you can leave their default. So Visual Studio customization, this is gonna ask you which version of Visual Studio, you can leave that as Visual Studio Pro. You can also leave this as the latest version of this image, that's all great. Next one down, the supported version. Again, you can leave this to whatever the default is. That's fantastic. Customized SQL database configuration. On this option, you do want to think about this. Do you, um, this is asking what data set do you wanna specify in this environment? So if you want all of the Contoso data deployed to this environment because you wanna play around, you wanna develop your own um, code, you can leave this as demo. If, however, you are not gonna use Contoso data and you're gonna restore from a backup from an existing environment you've already set up all your data in, maybe from test or production, you're gonna to wanna to change this to none. I'll go ahead and leave this as demo, um, just seeing as this is kind of a standalone environment for now. You can also specify data for financial reporter. Next thing, we've got disk space configuration. So here you can adjust um, how much disk space and disk you want. This will uh, you know, um, change the cost of the machine. I'm gonna leave these as default. Then there's this premium storage setting. This is one of the settings that I recommend you change to enable. Again, there's some cost associated with enabling premium storage, but this is gonna use like that solid state drive. And that really, I, I do find that really makes a difference with the speed of your development. Um, and, and so that's really helpful. If you're not worried about the performance of your environment, you can leave this disabled. I also believe people have done some testing that if you enable this premium storage, it may even result in you getting some faster processors. Please double check on that, but that's, I, I think, what I've heard. Next, we can say manage disk settings. These we can leave um, as standard LRS as well. Next one is this customized virtual machine. This is where we wanna actually specify the name of our machine. So we specified the name of the LCS machine, but this specifies the name that shows up in Azure. So I find it helpful to just use the exact same name that you've used in LCS. That way when you're seeing your costs in Azure, you understand what um, machine this was tied to. The next one here, it's a little hard to show, sorry, is um, Power Platform Integration. And so in here, you can turn this on if you want to kind of configure and pre-install some of the Power Platform environments. I will say with some of the new changes with Power Platform Admin Center and some of the templates that you can deploy, it may be easier to wait for that, but if you need Power Platform set up now, this is what you need to make sure that you've turned on and agreed to um, to make sure that your development environment can work with those things. All right, the next piece is Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. Um, this just says, do you wanna publish it to your homepage? You can leave that disabled. Customized virtual network is the last one. I'll just move it here so you can kind of see it. Um, you can leave this on creating a new virtual network each time. If there's a specific need, you've got some, certain security where you need to select an existing virtual network, you can pick this and then specify that virtual network. But otherwise, you're set. And those are really all the settings. So as kind of a reminder, there's a few of these. We did change the premium storage, the name, um, as well as paid attention to this SQL database, whether it's a demo or not. We can click done once we're ready. And then finally, we can click next to actually deploy. Once you click next, you are gonna get a pop-up um, now, um, or you may get a pop-up saying that, hey, uh, Power um, Platform uh, Admin Center is uh, available to deploy environments. 
um, now as well. Do you want to deploy it that way in, instead? Um, and just double checking that you really do want to deploy your environments through LCS. But as of um, the recording of this video, that's a great way to still do that. Um, so you can just click deploy. You may get an error message as well saying, hey, it, it didn't work the first time or something. You can just click OK or retry and have it keep um, processing and it should um, succeed. After you've got that started, you are going to see um, that your environment, if I cancel out on this, you're going to see in your deployment status, it changed from queued to deploying to deployed. Um, and the process basically takes anywhere from four to eight hours typically to deploy a new um, development environment like this. After you've got your new development environment, I'll just kind of click into this one here. You can select it from the list of cloud hosted environments. You can select full details to see um, the details in the environment. And then on this page, this is where you're able to get the link to log in to the front end of the environment, as well as you can download a remote desktop um, file that gives you the URL to remote into the back end of the environment, as well as you'll get um, a username as, and password. So to kind of show you where all of those are, if you click this login button, you can say log on to environment, that'll get you to the front end D365 environment. You also got a cloud point of sale and retail server URL deployed as well, and that's where those URLs are. And then your remote desktop, um, link is right here. You click on that. It's going to download that remote desktop file. Um, you can then click on it and then you can enter in your username right here. Um, you want to include this built in slash admin, the whole piece. And then if you click on this um, copy button or this eye icon, it's going to show you the password associated with this username as well as copy it into your clipboard so you can remote in. So behind here, you can see this is the deployed environment. You can um, access the um, front end by pasting in the URL, either on a browser here or on a browser on your own machine. Either way, it's, it's open to the public there. Um, you do need to use uh, the same username and password um, that you logged into LCS and deployed this environment as um, to be able to access this front end. So just remember that. And, um, and then from there, you can go start up Visual Studio. I pinned it to my taskbar um, down here, but otherwise you can go to the Windows bar, type Visual Studio, open it up, log in with your account, create a new, you know, new project or start a project without code. You can go to view application explorer, just like you would in any other development environment. This is going to show you all of the normal application um, files. You can then view code um, and tables and data, etc. from from there. You'll notice I've got a few different companies in this environment. Um, and because I deployed the um, because I deployed the demo data, so uh, I think the environment is not working right at the moment. But you can click that drop down and select all the different Contoso companies. I think it defaults to the DAT company, and then um, you can view data, uh, play around in the system, and really enjoy it from there. So that's really it. Again, um, this is really helpful to know how to deploy a cloud host environment. There's also virtual machines that you can deploy locally on your laptop. And then I think soon we're gonna have some new ways to deploy um, environments, um, but they're great. This is how you can learn, uh, develop new code for uh, your customers or anyone else. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.